Maybe I went a little bit too hard there. Um, there we go. Looks like maybe some live action. India Robinson up, trying to get rid of a 5.5. Again, a, a solid start. She's been good with those first turn options and really pushed the pushed it on that final move too. Right here with our Boost Mobile replay. Yeah, just streaking down the line, waiting for the section to line up, and she knows this way so well. Now she's able to rip into that big carving manoeuvre, and this way it sort of just peters out a bit. But Sal, she sticks with it. She knows she's got to stick the finish, and she does. It's a cool thing once we get to that juncture, we can really see the future of the matchups and both sides of the draw of the brackets. Fajide Fierro. Nice snap there for the Tahitian. Make it two. Yorana. One more. Let's finish it off. And Mike Tairoa for Fajide Fierro. Matt Myers likes it. He's the coach. She's sitting in fourth place before this one. Has on a backhand down the line thinking, snaps at it and always thinking down the line. This is well served and this last turn here, this just nails it. She yeah. had to stick that one, Kaipo. This feels excellent to me. I mean, this is great surfing. If it's not excellent, it's gonna be near so because the technique, the body mechanics, the timing, all on point and a beautiful finish right here. Yeah, it, so this heat has been dominated by the goofy footers and it just goes to show did no disadvantage. Oh, yeah. High fives all around. And then, yeah. And some movement here. Just beautiful. Beautiful conditions. And uh, for a rail surfer like Isabella, it's going to provide a, a good face for her to attack. Staunch as she rides out of that final move. Stood up. Pretty happy with what she was able to do there. Uh, Isabella is the one that's championship to a level at the moment. Yep. Oh. And there's some, you know, a oh. real flow between yeah. these maneuvers. She gets rewarded, keep it together, and let a good turn go. But on the outside, Rich, India Robinson found a much bigger wave. Oh, just streaking down the line here. She's already done one really nice carve. There's a second. One of the biggest waves we've oh. seen today. And a third as she comes right down into this uh, section. Past Little Marley now. Through the spectators. She's still being judged. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Really hacking into that turn. Well, don't get in the way. She'll cut you in half. No limit on how many waves you catch. But you've got to be careful with your <laughs> wave selection. Oh, just it, Your natural urge is to just take as many waves as you can in that 30 minutes. But... Selection, it's key. And here we go, it's going to be the surfer in blue from Huahini. And this is Vahine. Unbelievable barrel rider on that forehand, obviously, spending a lot of time out there at Tiopu, but as you can see, she's got a sharp backhand as well. Nice ride. Good finish, too. Really threw some fireworks on that final section. Absolute gamble there for Vahine and now she's uh, maybe going to get the payoff of letting that ride go because uh, if Francisca Paselko was on this one there's a really good chance she turns in the 6.35 Vahine's going to want to make it count it oh, looks wow. like there is another line behind this one this is a two-wave set Francisca is going to capitalize on the next one but Vahine's not taking any chances she's in attack mode she wants to make sure of it here with a good finish. A little wobbly there, but recovers well. Um, I don't, I don't really know. Look how she says. <laughs> um, I think just the level is so good, you know. Like there's no easy hits at all. Like everybody's whipping, and the level has gone through the roof. And there's so much like progressiveness too in women's surfing now. I see girls like doing crazy progressive move, moves and then also like you know they have the real game so scores for the competitors on the opening exchange but down the line now india the surfer from victoria originally now spending a lot of time up on the coast he's up again a couple of hits there on the outside the last move is probably our strongest on the ride so she had a five on that first one 
Well, that's going to uh, that's going to eclipse the five. India's going to take it. Oh, it was an easy call. It's a beautiful look at Wall and India. She lays into these first couple of turns. Only looking to improve on a 5.4. Under a minute to go. Will Sarah get an opportunity to answer on the outside? She could be after a pretty big score. This wave does it sing through the end, rock, end section here into the Rainbow Bay. India attacking the lip there. Loading up again off the bottom. Carving approach. And now lining up her finish. Oh, great point wave surfing. 25 seconds to go. She looks over her shoulder. God, that's why we're having a bit of difficulty with you. <laughs> that's typo. <laughs> Here we go. Sally Fitz. Her opening wave starts off with a nice carve. Wall in front of her snaps it. Showing some variety already. Great rail work there. Fitzgibbons continues down the line. And she is going to come right out of that two-wave combo. She's going to get her name right into the game. And now we got a heat on our hand, Bugs. And we had some action during the break. India Robertson got herself into this one. Felicity. Yeah, nice clean snap out of the top, followed by a second one. Lays it on rail for the third and kind of getting a little bit hung up there. Ooh. Yeah, she really has. Her backhand is looking absolutely on fire, dropping big scores throughout the event. But Sally, up and riding. She's had great form on the CT, even Sally Fitzgibbons. Just, it's so difficult to break through for for big results on the CT now. We know that as Sally lets go of a couple of nice hits there to get started. Needs a strong finish here. Has really put a lot into each of those carving turns on a run through this event. And taking this one way down the line. A lot of room to move. Plants a little end section hit on the end of it. And uh, that should be a pretty reasonable way to kick off this 35-minute heat. Yeah, nice tidy ride from Sal. Just on six minutes to go, Sally on the outside gets a shot at it too. And there's some deep carving turns, but she'll need a more vertical approach down the line if she's going to stay ahead of the Californian. Wow. Yeah, definitely. Uh, another replay of India. Just turn out of the top here. And she's looking to bring it through to the inside. She get a finish. She does. Wow. Nice finishing turn there for India. That's and another ride. Yeah, all the Surfing Australia crew really liking that. Bottle liking that one too. In the women's division, India Robinson, Flick, you know, her bid to get back on the championship tour, she started off on strong footing. Yeah, she really did. And, you know, she's touched on it throughout the event that she's had a lot of stuff going on personally, obviously coming back from an injury, not quite feeling 100%. And with some, you know, her road to the final, she took out some big names. One of them, Stephanie Gilmore. So she's got a lot to reflect on once she gets home. That is, talk about a confidence <laughs> booster for India Robinson and her quest to get back on the championship tour. Yeah, that is uh, something we're going to celebrate. We're going to get into that. So now let's take a look at the women's Bailey Ladders bracket and India Robinson's road to victory. She did not have an easy road. Look at that. First, she had to overcome an informed Sarah Baum flick, and then look at the semi-final matchup she had to overcome. Yeah, massive semi-final, and it was pretty interesting hearing Bottle once she'd come in and beaten Stephanie Gilmore, who arguably is the best out here. Obviously, she's a home break. Bottle said to Hayden, you know, like, there's still more to do, and she was pretty aware of that as well. She's like, I've still got one more, and there's still a job at hand. So, yeah, eventually taking on Sora and taking home the win. But, yeah, with beautiful turns like this, it's uh, we saw India just absolutely on fire. Her road to the final on the quarterfinal started with Sarah Baum. She took the win easily there. Now, look at this matchup. Semi-finals, Rich, <laughs> against the Queen of Snapper. Yeah, against the uh, the undisputed Queen of Snapper Rock, Stephanie Gilmore. And it was just some really solid surfing. And I feel like there's a new energy to India's approach. That It's a bit more radical. It's a bit faster. There's, there's more power and conviction in each one of her turns. So, you know, she really tapped into that to, to overcome the great Steph. And that is no easy beat. There's not many people who can claim they've beaten the eight-time world champ. Kept that mo motivation, kept that momentum into the final where she defeated Sawyer Lindblad Flick. Yeah, th this was an interesting final. She got a couple of scores straight off the bat. This one, probably, I think it was her best one, this one here, and then it went really sleepy in the middle, and she had a couple of decisions to make with priority, but 
Yeah, she just got it over the uh, girl from San Clemente and that last turn there, so explosive. And uh, you can see Bottle just absolutely stoked with that result and all of the team from Surfing Australia. There's, there's great surfing that India's been doing, but she's also competed exceptionally well through the week, making good decisions, uh, obviously tuning in to, to, to the break. It's, it's been a tricky break all week. You've really had to figure out the riddle of Snapper Rocks this week, and she did it perfectly. Oh, and then Sally Fitzgibbons behind her. This is replay. So Sal did pick off a wave, and she got slotted. So whatever she missed on that first set, she's made up for here. Incredibly deep tube. Couple of big turns. Here's India. Identifies this right. Drops in. Nice clean face. Snaps it there. That's a great beginning. Back up in the lip. Oh. Solid surfing by India Robinson. And she will extend her lead over the pack. Well done for the surfer from Janja. Sally's going to use priority. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Fitzgibbons. Good looking wave and great looking surfing by Sally Fitzgibbons. This is going to be a breakthrough score. She makes a little connection as the wave splits. Gets a bonus. One more turn on the inside. The surfing's definitely there. Uh, so let's see how she converts. And putting her head down now, Rich. Yep. She really wants this wave, and rightly so. It's got a great corner, a great drop. Able to get some pressure on the tail there to bring the nose up. She finds a clean face. Beautiful oh. snap in the lip. And uh, just a one maneuver, but wow, that would have felt nice, Jess. Gosh, that was dominant, that move. I almost thought she kind of missed it and blew that first section, but then regained composure, calmed the nerves, and straight into that blowout tail maneuver. I love that. Isabella Nichols having a look at this wave here. It's, she's going to need to be quick. Another great drop. Oh, yes. Sets under the barrel there, but not quite in the tube. Comes out of the open face. A nice snapping turn and a nice floater to finish. Wow, how quick were those maneuvers in through the lip? Look, similar to Macy's, though. Just outrun the barrel a little bit at the start. It's going to cost her in the score, but, I mean, confidence to burn out here for Isabella. To see how her fellow goofy footer in the mix goes. Another goofy footer coming up later in the round. Aaron Brooks versus India Robinson. I cannot wait to see that unfold. Sally Fitz up and riding now. Nice carve to start things off. Really smooth and into the pocket again, ripping through that turn. We'll want to get a hit on the end section here. She has to show some variation. It's been a lot of the same thing here. And it was Sal under priority getting this one during the break, Laura. Yeah, had a nice look to it this wave. A nice big slash there, throwing the tail. And then finishing off here, just floating over. Score so far in the heat. Right behind, though. Firing right up into the lip. Isabel Nichols finishes off her ride. So we'll be waiting for scores for each of our competitors and set the situation, Jess. Here she goes. Nichols. Good looking right here. Nice slash to open. One more time. Make it three for Isabella Nichols. And this wave continues to give her all the way to a closeout maneuver, five turns to the score. She probably is going to ditch that 4.33. Luke, what do you think? Yeah, really solid surfing. I love the speed. Here goes Isabella. Doesn't want to play defense. Wants to go all offense at the end of this heat. And she's got a nice looking double up in front of her right now. Well, there's only a two turn combo, but Jess, what do you think? Well, she does that little high line hop again. And yeah, real critical. Gets a little fin release. This thing doubles up as well. I, I think if I'm going to be hypercritical, this end turn right here, it's really strong. And Isabella's just managing to, to edge ahead here at the moment, but it's not over. Even though Isabella's found some room here at the moment. Oh. Nice hit. There's some solid oh. surfing <laughs> as she gets another one in, and that's a big combination. And India, or well, she'll be absolutely up against it when this number drops. She had to take out the queen of snapper rocks in the semifinals, Steph Gilmore. Here's a replay of the start. It's a 7.33 start for India Robinson, Jess. Yeah, you can just see it's it's beautiful surfing. It's well-timed. It's well-constructed. She's composed throughout the whole wave, and she just reacts to what the section's offering up. It's going to go. A challenge, but on a big day where there's a lot of energy in the, the lineup, can be really hard to set that rail. 
As we get to live action once again on the outside, Nichols up with a good section standing oh. up here. <laughs> and there is a better belt. And that is going to be a, a decent score now with just under 23 minutes to go. Absolutely. Well, she has picked the gems in this heat so far, and I think she adjusted after that last 5-1-7 to, to think, yep, OK, I'm going to have to attack that end section. And she did just that on that way. Meanwhile, Sally Fitzgibbons, let's see what she finds in the lineup. Oh, nice little power hack to start things off and then did really well to get up and over that oncoming section. Okay, let's take a look at our women's bracket uh, here for stop number two on the Challenger Series and Isabella Nichols, like she said, had to deal with some different conditions in each one of these challenges. Uh, the quarterfinals yesterday afternoon in a storm. I mean, the semifinals yesterday afternoon in a storm and then big bombing lefts for the final, Jess. Yeah, and you can just see a perfect example of Presence's power for her. From that quarterfinal all the way through to this very final, it was her presence that got her the win. Here's a replay, too, of her road to the final. This is the different little um, alley right conditions that they had to contend with, and she just picked this thing apart. She was really well-timed. She readjusted throughout each wave in every single heat she had, and that presence is what gave her the win, Kaipo. Great surfing here. This was to overcome Teresa Bonvalot in the quarterfinals at Alley Wrights. Yeah, then a, things yeah. got tricky as she hit the beach and had to set up for this for the semifinals, Rich, against India Robinson. Yeah, sorry about that, Kaipo. This is when that uh, that gale force wind picked up and, and it, you know, it just went from from sort of zero to ten uh, in, in terms of what our competitors were dealing with here. Very, very tricky conditions and then uh, she did get Get the win there, and uh, then this is what she had to deal with today. Big bombing conditions, but was able to fish out this one. Great performance, goes excellent here, an 8.17 in the final, Jess. Yeah, that second turn right there, that was the money for her, and you could see she could almost feel the celebration, and there's the Aussie contingent. Of course, Sally Fitz, Ellie and Gabby Spake cheering her up for the win, and it's a, it, you can see the relief as well, and there's the ring of fire. <laughs> Eats going down on that end section. She needs to improve on that. Fierro here joining the dots. That was nice. And she'll hang on to that, all right. So an opportunity there for the judges just to award points because they keep seeing people fall and they're just throwing decimals at this. And Fierro there with a nice combo of turns. Got the 4-3-3 prior to that. Oh, here we see Vahines. Um We see her actually nail this end section. You know, so she'll be going into the... Hopefully not. An important wave that she'd fell on at the end if she gets another one. The other point, she's had a long time to think about that as well as we see Fitzgibbons just swinging on a smaller inside wave. I'm not sure there's loads on offering here for Sal, but she doesn't mind. Wow. And she throws a progression, gets a nice ramp and does an air reverse over a section on the inside. So like we said, she's just surfing her way through this heat right now, picking up insiders. Needs something to happen for her to really fire up and bring the best out of her in competition. She's got priority here. Tell you what, she will use this. A good looking wave for Vaine off the bottom. Nice snap in the pocket. And again, pushing hard off the bottom. That's good from her. Falls out the lip and again, getting good release from the tail. This one just keeps giving opportunities. Fierro, strong wave from her. Goodness me, that was a nice way from Vahini. I, I like how in her turn she was great, extending it right up into the lip to the lead with this one. It's a bigger wave, comes off the bottom. She uses that foamy section we were talking about earlier with the onshore wind. Straight into another one, drops down, absorbs the shock of that straight into the next turn. And this really... Uh well, this is Isabella up and riding. Lovely little finner out the back. Just the one maneuver, but we saw her get a score earlier with just one power hack. Let's see how that plays out. Looking to finals weekend this weekend. It's a Friday mid-morning in South Africa. You're checking out the CT pedigree of Bronte McCauley. Whippy in the transition. Let's get caught up with action during the break. And this is our veteran on the backhand, Bronte McCauley. Wow, she whacks it, throws that board right up at the lip and showing her intent in this heat from very early on. A three-turn combo pull rides out cleanly. That was a low tide wampa at Belito. Meanwhile, further down the beach, Vian Ferro will sting it in the pocket again. She found a 5.83 and continues her momentum. 
In fact, she's found a 5.93 as well. So a little bit of a momentum build here for the young Tahitian goofy footer. Well, there comes the experience. Championship tour experience, challenger experience. This is last gasp. The scorecard asks a 6.47 of the Tahitian will get to work. We're down to 25 seconds now, and the turns are coming from Vianne Ferro. She's banking herself for a wow. number here, and a bit of a smile on the face as well for the young Tahitian, and it is like a boxing match. Blows going backwards and forwards here in the quarterfinals. So multiple maneuvers out the back. Here goes McCall. We've got a heat on our hands here. Great hit from Bronte. Love that. And again into the lip and gets that done. So a big hanger of a maneuver. Two real different approaches. Spencer, just multiple hits on the lip. McCauley, the one big turn to open it up with a finish as well. Love that exchange. And sort of six or seven of exactly the same turns. Now look at this by comparison. Whack under the lip, throws the spray in the air down and smacks it again. Almost coming unstuck. Meanwhile, here's Bronte. Quick into that bottom turn. Great first hit. Look at the speed from it down the line. Wow, that's aggressive. That's huge. Bronte McCauley goes massive for a closeout hit. You can see the delight on her face. I tell you what, degree of difficulty, critical sections, I feel that's ticking a lot of boxes on the criteria. I reckon that might be one of the biggest turns we've seen in the event so far in the, in the ladies' rounds. A great looking wave. She clearly waited and wanted the set kind of wave. She goes up so late, Paul. That's the most difficult time you can hit that. Yeah, the big powerful goofy foot and you think it's some venues on tour and what he might be able to do if and when he were able to get the championship tour meanwhile let's check out live action mccauley great looking away from her nice spark and that time she'll stick the finish so bronte with those combos that we talked about vain fiero with priority decides not to use it mccauley will say you know what i'm sitting on a five let's get a work on that let's get a look at this wave here mike so for me, it was a very similar looking wave to Vaheen's last wave, but Bronte surfing it a little bit more in the critical section. Can you see how that wave massively commit physically to that turn, almost kind of flicked it a bit. Meanwhile, here goes your heat leader off the bottom. Hard, great hit for McCauley again. Into the lip, just pushing on the back foot in a steep, steep section. Speaking of quality, let's remind ourselves how it went down. Uh, to finals day, has set up the bracket and surfers putting their hand up really with big performances. That's what it took to get here to come back for finals day. We just had the semis and the finals to run today. And just check in how this stood up. Bronte McCauley's part of the final. Alyssa Spence has been blazing on this tour. Isabella Nichols as well, recently back from the Challenger Series. Bahini, on the other hand, got past Sally in the quarters. That happened yesterday. And then Charlie Kelly, that was a tough heat today. So this one matched up really well between these two but we talked about the consistency of Bronte McCauley Kai and that's what she showed us throughout. Well to be honest for me from round one I had a little tick up against Bronte's name she just looked so good every heat putting on probably some of the highest heat totals all the way through the event she just really seems to have found her stride again her confidence and I mean I couldn't be more happy for her either because she's one of the nicest girls on tour. I think over the, after one of the softest starts to the year that she's had, she's certainly uh, going. Here are some highlights from the final. Vianney got this wave and uh, set the bar nicely, and uh, Bronte just came back with some solid power. The surfer from Western Australia just attacking the lip and really just locked in those scores. Vahini, this was the one where she... It was the biggest set wave, obviously, of both of the finals, but she didn't really find a rhythm here and wasn't able to capitalize on a good finish and just digging the nose in and perhaps the final just rolling away from her right there. Bronte up and riding, and uh, I love that turn. For me, that was the woman's turn of the event. And what, what a crucial time for it to come as well, Kai. Yeah, I think the moment for me there was the flash of the Bell family, the Bean <laughs> Stars were just losing their minds. Of course, the reason we're on the challenges well, it's all about those ratings and getting yourself in a position to qualify for the championship tour. And we'll update those ratings for you and see exactly where we are. But we're on the midpoint of the season right now. Three more events to go, of course. Four results counting and pretty crucial with a, a big points here and big momentum going into the back half of the season. 
Yeah, I think the big one being Cole could probably take off the rest of the season if he really wanted to. I know he won't because he's a competitor. But in the ladies, look at that big jump up for Bronte up into fifth. That is the last qualifying position for the ladies. But So she will definitely be going to the US Open to try and get another score. Yeah, significant moves being made here by the likes of Zali Kelly as well. Getting herself in the top 10. Vahini Fierro up there in fourth, Mike. That'll be crucial. Isabella Nichols, top spot. Solid result here. He cool third with the semi-final finish and looking good at the top of the ratings. Yeah, almost 7,000 points separating number one to number five there. So you got to feel Isabella Nichols or his, and Sally Fitzgibbons are going to be very confident going into the, you know, those next three events. And it's great to see such a huge jump there for Vaheen and Bronte. The Australians dominant in the top five, four of those Five names for the women coming from Australia. Let's check out the men. No real surprises. He's won two events. Cole Hauschmann sitting at the top there. So taking that top spot from Jacob Wilcox. Fred Moray's making a major jump up into third. Yeah, and uh, Cole sitting pretty. 20,700 points. Only halfway through the season. So he's pretty much booked his ticket. Jacob Wilcox will be feeling pretty confident that he's heading to the World Tour as well. But also look at the big jump for Frederica up into third, 14,000 points. He is looking good. He needs one more result and he's pretty much booked his ticket back. Kate Matson, big jump to fifth. And then also Joan Duru still sitting in eighth place there. He's still in the mix. Yeah, Cole, Cole Hausman and Jacob Wilcox, they've bolted off the start line already around the first corner there. But if you look at the, the points in the bottom five there, a uh, quarterfinal, semi or a final finish there could really shake up those those couple of positions there. 8,000 for Marco Mignor. You'd have to think he's not safe by any means in that position at this stage. Yeah, certainly he'll be someone looking to go deep into the US Open and obviously head up into Europe for the Challenger Series in Portugal before we head to Brazil. So that's what's in store on the Challenger Series.